We like to look at the rock art of the ancient Southwesterners, and it's even more fun when we can interpret it. The writing of the ancient Southwesterners, of course, shows up in different forms. It's in the pottery, it's in the basketry, it's on the rocks sand painting, ceremonial objects. You'll often hear me banging on about the weechel. <laughs> the weechel are really important for interpreting symbolism from the ancient Southwest because the weechel weren't touched by Europeans in the same way. They were able to secrete themselves away up in the Sierra Madre Mountains and sustain their um, ancient lifestyle and religious customs for thousands of years. So they hold the key to a lot of interpretation of the ancient Udo Aztecans in the North American Southwest. The Kumeyaay people, the border people at the, um, now what is the border of the United States and Mexico, um, are just the people of that region of land. It wasn't always two countries. It was, it's just, um, you know, the Southwestern desert. They claim some of the Huichol creation stories as theirs. Also, the Pai Pai of Baja California, they claim relatives in Arizona. This, this region is fluid, you know, the Mexico, um, Arizona, Southern California. This, this Southwestern Udo Aztecan region was fluid. To understand the ancient Southwesterners, personally, I do things like spend a lot of time on foot on the ancestral land. And I also spend time trying to recreate the art forms, um, basketry, beadwork, um, I've dabbled in pot pottery. <laughs> um, just trying to recreate some of the, the rock art with unwieldy tools or unwieldy pens on paper to kind of reproduce these images. And then I look to the ethnographic ref record to see what they mean. In another video I made, about the eye of God and what that means to the Weechel. I, I talk about the front shield and the back shield and these ceremonial objects that are circular in nature with uh, imagery on them. This video is about the front shield of Mother Eastwater and some of the images that are on her front shield as sketched by Carl Lumholtz in the 1800s. What I did was I made my own piece of Weechel bead art and tried to reproduce some of the symbolism found on Mother Eastwater's front shield. So I'll just use that piece of art that I made as a reference to point to some of the symbols. And then when you see these symbols, maybe when you see them reproduced someplace else in a different medium, they'll, you know, it'll ring some bells and you can kind of see how these symbols, um, I don't know, you know, show up different ways, but kind of have the same meaning. God's eyes or eye of God are ceremonial objects that are described as front shields of a particular deity. And these are two examples of front shields of Mother Eastwater that were found in the cave of that mother um, near Santa Catarina in Mexico. And these were sketched by Carl Lumholtz. So what I did was I tried to produce some of the imagery in this particular shield, mostly because it's really geometric compared to this one, for example, or even, I'll show you some others like that, that. These are all Mother East water. And I thought uh, that the, the <laughs> more clearly geometric one would be easier to try to reproduce. And what I did was I tried to reproduce it in a different media, right? A different medium. Um, so this is using beads. So geometry is important because the beads are uniform in size. And so I'll explain to you, the, the point of it is, that it shows how the symbols are the same, but how they can change with use of the media. So if you see the same symbol in rock art, it might look different than an, a symbol painted on pottery or woven into um, reeds or placed into beads. Okay, so this front shield has the white portions in the middle. These are clouds rising. And I tried to create that clouds rising. So surrounding the clouds, these are birds soaring above the clouds. The darker ones are red birds. These are blue birds. In the original artifact, this had color. So here are the blue birds and the red birds. And the kind of bird they are is a swift 
So these crosses that surround the clouds and the birds are um, corn, various colors of corn. And I tried to recreate that, but because of the medium I'm using has a certain particular geometry, um, I made the crosses, you see? But um, maybe they don't look that way at first glance, right? They kind of look like triangles because I made the choice to surround them with these little white beads. But these are crosses, just like that. Different kinds of corn. Now I think this is really interesting. This zigzag around the edge is actually a, a representation of Mother Eastwater herself. A synonym for that is a snake, and a synonym for that is a river. It's showing the undulating energy of Mother Eastwater as represented by both a snake and a river. So again, I created that energy line as best I could with this medium, um, and I, I even gave the snake some eyes. <laughs> So the symbolism's in there, but it can be interpreted in you know, three different ways. The energy of Mother East Water, the river, and the snake. So when praying to Mother East Water, what you're praying for is rain and health. And that's why we've got water is her life force, also the snake, the symbol of water. We've got corn. I also took See, this is a this is a a design feature that Lumholtz didn't explain, but I went ahead and put in. Sometimes this is explained as um, like a, a heart line of energy. You'll see this in other um, Weichel art. They'll have this kind of line or a zigzag right in the middle of their body, and it just kind of shows their heart line of energy. And since I saw that in this one, I went ahead and tried to reproduce it. So just to take a moment to let you know that. I'm actually making these. I make these for a hobby, but because I make so many, I have to do something with them. So I'm also selling them and it funds my, um, you know, book buying fetish, such as this and others that inform a lot of the, the videos I make for this channel. And I have some other items um, made in the Weechel style that are for Christmas and uh, animals. And Christmas, they're all Christmas tree ornaments or just, you know, nice shelf ornaments. And you can check them out at my website, theancientsouthwest.com. I hope you understand why I chose to do this exercise and why I chose to show it to you. The more different ways you can see a symbol reproduced, the more familiar it becomes. And the easier it becomes to see what was happening in the minds of people who came before us. I enjoy it. <laughs> I hope you do too. Thanks for watching.